Hello once again, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School. And in this video, I'm going to focus once again on topic 1.8, determining limits using the squeeze theorem. And we're going to turn our attention to example three in my curriculum package. So that particular example asks you to find the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine squared of x, all divided by x. And as with the previous two examples in this uh, in these guided notes that I've created, we're going to be very focused upon using these special trig limits that were outlined on the front page. And this particular limit um, can be done one of two different ways. And I'm going to go ahead and illustrate both of those ways in this video. So we have method one. Now method one requires that you look through this limit and certainly realize that you can't just green light, right? We call green light at Avon High School whenever you can just plug the value of x that's approaching, that the value that x is approaching, in for x. And if we try that, we're going to get 0 divided by 0. So that means we have to work harder. And sometimes working harder might mean using algebra. Maybe it means using some trig rules. Maybe it means doing a little bit of both. So in this particular case, what we hope the student would realize is that the numerator is the difference of two squares. One minus cosine squared can be factored into one minus cosine of x times one plus cosine of x. That's the trick for method one. It's not often that you factor difference of squares that contain trig words, but it can occur. Now at this point, we can use a rule that we learned earlier that says that the limit of a product is the product of two separate limits. And I'm going to divide that product right here in the middle. And I'm going to put the 1 minus cosine of x, of course, first, but I'll put him above the x, at which point then my other limit would only be concerned with 1 plus cosine of x. Notice that we don't need any special denominator here. If anything, the denominator would be a 1, of course, because whenever we multiply fractions, we just need to concern ourselves with multiplying the top times the bot, top, and then the bottom times the bottom. Now, why is this important? Well, as you can see, this first limit is per limit number 2 from our table, which gives us a value of 0 which pretty much determines what's going to happen for this next limit. But if you want, you can green light and let x be 0. And of course, 1 plus the cosine of 0 is 1 plus 1, which we know to be 2. But that really doesn't matter because 0 times 2 is going to be 0 anyway. So that's method 1. Now, method 2 is just a little bit more trig oriented. You don't have this factoring step. So for method two, we'll look at this one minus cosine squared, and we can think about a, a particular identity from trig class. And perhaps you recall one of the most popular identities from trig class is the Pythagorean identity that says the cosine squared of x, or let's start with sine squared, well, sorry. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to one. Now, if we were to subtract cosine squared over to the other side, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to see that sine squared is going to be the result. So that being said, we could rewrite this problem as the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine squared of x all over x. OK, now that's probably going to open up the door for property number 1. The only problem is property number one doesn't have a sign that's squared, but that's not an issue because we can split apart this sine squared by separating him into two components, sine of x times sine of x. And then I can put the first sine of x over an x, and maybe the second sine of x would be over a one so that we can still maintain top times the top would be the numerator, the bottom times the bottom would make up the denominator. And of course, at this point, we can invoke our property that says the limit of a product is the product of the two separate limits. Now you might recognize 
This limit comes from our table, as we said before, which is a value of 1. But then the sine of x's limit allows us to green light, plug in 0 for x. We get sine of 0, which we know to be 0. And I think we're pretty thankful that this happens because the answer better be 0 because we basically took the same limit, but just using a slightly different uh, method. Anyhow, I hope this, ho this helps you out a little bit. And uh, just take your time, practice through the problems in the Skill Builder, and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks for joining.